Yo, what's up everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on to the next question. This one's pretty unique. It's a pretty cool one. So given f of x equals x times x plus 1 times x plus 3, we have to find the x-intercepts of this corresponding function, f of negative bracket x plus 1. And there's actually two different ways to do this. You can do this algebraically using function notation. That's the first way I'm going to do it, and that's actually my preferred way. But you can also do this using transformations, so I'll show you both. So first thing I'm going to do is actually rewrite the function over here. So we have f of x equals x. And I'm actually going to put these factors in square brackets. So we'll have x times x plus 1 times x plus 3. And so what f of negative bracket x plus 1 is, basically we have to plug in this whole expression for these x values. And actually what I'm going to do is simplify this. So I'm going to distribute that negative inside the bracket like that. And then I'm going to take this expression and plug it in for all the x values, right? If f of x is this, then f of anything in this bracket, we would plug in whatever that expression is in the brackets for each of these x values. So f of negative x minus 1, we're going to plug in this for all the x values. That's why I put these square brackets. So we're going to have negative x minus 1 for this x value. For this x value, we're going to plug in negative x minus 1, and then we're going to have this plus 1 at the end. And then we're going to plug in negative x minus 1 for this x, and then we got a plus 3 at the end. And then we just really have to simplify here. So this, let's keep it as is. Over here, we'll have negative x minus 1 plus 1. Notice the negative 1 plus 1, those net out to 0, so we're just left with negative x here. And then over here, we got negative x minus 1 plus 3, so minus 1 plus 3 gives us uh, what? Positive 2. And so from here, you can actually find what the x-intercepts are, because remember, the x-intercepts is the x values that make the function equal to 0. So it's basically when these brackets are going to be zero. So we could figure out when does, um, let's do it on the side here, when does ne negative x minus 1 equals zero? Well that's going to happen if we bring this over when x is equal to negative 1. That's one of the x-intercepts. When does negative x equal zero? Well when x is equal to zero, right, if we divide both sides by negative 1. And then when does negative x plus 2 equal zero? Well that's going to happen, bring the negative x over, when x is equal to 2. So those are the three x-intercepts. So that's one way to do it. If you wanted to simplify this, make it look a little nicer, what we can do, factor out a negative uh, 1 from this bracket, right, to make all of the x values have positive leading coefficients. We could take out a negative 1 from here. This would turn it to x plus 1, right? All the signs would change. Take out a negative 1 from here. This would change into an x. Take out a negative 1 from here, this would change into x minus 2. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, times negative 1 is negative 1. And then we would have x in front, then x plus 1, and then x minus 2. Right? If you want to simplify the function into a nicer format, then from here we could tell 0, negative 1, positive 2. Same x-intercepts. Right, so this ends up being this function over here. So that's one way to get the x-intercepts. That's the algebraic way, quote unquote. Now, another way you could do this, a pretty uh, neat way, is you could take this original function and let's graph it. So notice that this here is a polynomial. It has x-intercepts of 0, negative 1, and then uh, negative 3. I'm going to write these x-intercepts over here to give myself some room to do it this other way. So watch what happens here. If we take this original function and graph it, these are the x-intercepts. Notice it's a positive leading coefficient, so it's going to start in this quadrant, and then it's going to look like that. Right, so here's the original function. Now notice here, for this function, what transformations are we undergoing? Well, notice that the k value 
is negative one. And then the D value is also negative one. Remember, it's the opposite sign. And what do both of these transformation values mean? Well, the K value of negative one means that we take this uh, function and reflect it in the Y axis when the K value is negative one. So what that would mean is this X intercept here of zero stays, but then this negative one would turn into a positive one, and then this negative three would turn into a positive three, right? If you visualize sort of taking this and reflecting it, basically you would end up with this function over here. So if this is f of x, what this function is, is f of negative x, right? We just added a k value of negative one. But then what does this d value of negative one do? Well, the d value of negative one, it takes this and it shifts it to the left by one unit, right? This x plus one, we could rewrite that as x minus negative one, right? Remember your transformation values. So the d value is negative one, which means we take this and we shift it um, one unit to the left. So this zero would shift to negative one. This positive one would shift to zero. And then this positive three would shift to positive two. And it would look like that. And notice that those x-intercepts, negative one, zero, and positive two, exactly what we got here when we did it algebraically. And notice if we take this and graph it, there's a negative leading coefficient, this negative in front, and then we got those three intercepts, right? So starting in this quadrant and going like that. So this graph here is f of negative x plus one, right? So that's another way to do it as well. Maybe a little less intuitive to be honest, when I first saw this, my mind first went to this way, right? The algebraic way. But then I realized you could also do it like this. So some of you may, uh, may go towards one, more so towards one direction than the other. But two different ways to do it. Those are the three new x-intercepts.